My name is Susan Elliott. I am a professor of geography and also a university research chair in medical geography at the University of Waterloo in Canada. The things I think make this journal very successful are, first of all, the interdisciplinary nature. So although we are all social scientists working in the health area, some of us are geographers, some of us are anthropologists, some of us are economists and so on. And I think we feed off each other. The other thing I think that makes the journal so successful is, um, and it sounds quite trite, but our word length. Because the journal allows for longer papers, we have more room to talk about contextualizing, theorizing, operationalizing, conceptualizing the work. And I think that's absolutely essential. In particular, the other thing that sets us apart is the work that we publish in this journal is theoretically informed. And that's absolutely essential. One of the things that I quote to my students all the time is uh, Nancy Krieger, who is a very famous social epidemiologist at Harvard University, who said, without theory, observation is blind and explanation is impossible. And I truly believe that. And so to be able to theoretically contextualize the work that's published in social science and medicine makes a huge difference. As a young academic, it was always, you know, the primary goal to get a paper in social science and medicine. It was also really, really important to me as a young faculty member to get that first, you know, sole authored paper in social science and medicine as uh, one of the stepping stones to a successful career as a, as a medical geography academic. I often give presentations to early career researchers about how to get published and how to get published in this journal in particular. And I always tell them that the most important thing is to have a compelling story. Um, and they need to have a compelling story that other people care about. I often encourage our young colleagues to uh, write to the editors and say, here I am. I'm an early career researcher. Here's my CV. Please add me to the, the reviewer pool. That's a good way to get started. And also here I am, I'm interested in becoming a member of the editorial board. I don't know what that um, entails, but here's my CV. And I will always write back to those young people and say, okay, we're gonna put you in the reviewer pool for sure. Um, so being proactive is really important. I think as editors also what we can do is look for those early career researchers when we're looking for reviewers for papers. Um, and really make an effort to include them in the review process. There's no better way to learn how to write a paper for publication than to critique the work of others. I feel very strongly that SSM, because we are such a big journal and so interdisciplinary, we can be more international than we currently are. The work that was published in social science and medicine should be impacting the well-being of populations. We need to start thinking beyond the health impacts of climate change to think about the well-being impacts of climate change. I would like to see more pieces that talk about societal impact of the research that we're doing to talk about um, uh, knowledge translation. So, you know, implementation science um, and what we can do with the results of our work and, and publishing papers that say, you know, I've done this great research and we've done it in partnership with a policymaker co-applicant or a policymaker partner or an NGO partner that is going to take the evidence that we created and advocate for this constituency group. There are just some barriers to publishing in, in really good journals like Social Science and Medicine, including language barriers as well as capacity barriers. And I know that uh, social science and medicine as a journal is committed to ensuring that we start to address these barriers.